All right, we're gonna go ahead and test the uh, pump cover slash stator support. Uh, we have all of our valving in, including the uh, old boost valve and sleeve temporarily so that we can um, test that and the pressure regulator valve. I mean, we're just testing the boost valve for curiosity's sake, nothing more. Uh, so we're gonna test four different locations, uh, generally speaking. And with the boost valve, there's two locations in one kinda. You have the uh, outboard side here, and then you have the inboard side here, okay? And then for your lockup valve, a TCC control valve, uh, you're gonna have this circuit right here. And then for your uh, limit valve, you're gonna have this circuit right here. And when we test this, there's a little orifice right here. We have to plug that with a finger. And then we're gonna test the um, end plug here for the pressure regulator valve. And we're gonna use the uh, hose itself and stick it right in this orifice right here. All right, um, to calibrate this machine, it's a very straightforward process. I'll just walk you through it real quick. So you're gonna take your hose that comes from the test uh, fitting and you're gonna stick it in the calibration receptacle here. Make sure it's fully installed, all right? And then from there, you're gonna turn the machine on. And when you turn the machine on, if this tester hasn't been used in a while or it's you know brand new out of the box, the needle's gonna be somewhere in this range between zero and 10, all right? When you turn it on, wherever it is, you're gonna adjust your pump valve, okay? You have your bleeder valve and your pump valve. You're gonna adjust your pump valve so that it's reading a steady five inches of lift. Once you do that, you're gonna stick a finger on the calibration port that's right over here. You can't see it, but it's you know right next to the receptacle here. And then the needle's gonna jump up to between 20 and 30. You're gonna adjust the bleeder valve until it reads 25 inches exactly, okay? So I already did this. As you can see, it's reading right at five inches. When I put my finger on the calibration port, it's now 25 inches. I take a finger away and it's now five inches. 25 and five. So we know we're ready to go. All right, so when I take that uh, hose out of that calibration receptacle, I'm gonna stick it right here. What we wanna see is 15 inches of lift or more in this location because what we're doing is we're testing where here in the bore plug. Okay, we're right at zero. So this is gonna take a little bit of effort because this tip is not perfectly flat. Okay, I have it lined up. So 15 inches. And okay, I'll see if I can do it again. All right, there we go. We want to see 15 or more inches. All right, we'll put it back onto the test block. All right, the next circuit we're going to test is going to be for the uh, limit valve. I want to lay my little gasket here so I have access to this little port. All right, so wait for the five inches to show. You can hear the air whooshing out of this little orifice. Then stick a finger, and now we're sitting at 18 inches. Okay, we take it away, back to five inches. Okay, so that passes. So two down, and two more to go. So here, we're gonna test this bore plug here for the lockup valve on this side. This is gonna be the side that's accessible from you know, underneath the pan if you're trying to service the transmission when it's still in the vehicle. Okay, this shape's kind of eccentric, so you just have to make sure you're covering it entirely. 
So 20 inches, that's fine. Now we'll go ahead and we'll test our ports for the boost valve. Okay, this one's a little long. Let me see if I can... Okay. No. Here we go. All right, that's giving us nine inches. I'll make sure if I had that correct. Ten inches, and I'm clamping down on it. Okay, outboard side. And same, 10 inches. So, 15 would have been preferable, but we're replacing this, so it's not that big of a deal. And that's why I like to install the Sonics O-ring boost valves, because uh, the sleeve just seals off that bore completely. I mean, I don't know how big of a deal this is, to be perfectly honest with you. Uh, again, when we looked at the transmission, there was no signs of, uh, you know, burnt clutch packs on a widespread basis, so... Um, my gut is telling me that this is actually probably not the end of the world, but You know, I've never reused one of these ever. I've always replaced uh, this Valve and sleeve with either a transgo or a sonics equivalent I think I used a transgo stuff very early on when I first started building these and then I switched over relatively quickly to the sonic stuff And that's what I've been using ever since All right, when you're using a vise, uh, use soft jaws, and then it may be a good idea to put some rags. Main thing is you don't want to mar up the uh, stator's working surface. All right, go extra on the lube here. And then lube up your O-rings. Get them all thoroughly saturated. All right, the cut side of the washer is going to face down, so there is a subtle difference. I mean, if you mess this up, I really, I really couldn't tell you what the consequences, if any, are. But that's the way it's technically supposed to go. Oh, come on, get in there. Get in there. All right, just carefully lower your assembly into position. Kind of jostle it if you need to. Like I said, this is a very tight fit, even without these O-rings, and that's what you want. You want a nice tight fit. Okay, so now we're making contact between the first O-ring and the inner diameter of the bore. Doesn't want to go right away. Don't force it. I mean, it's gonna take some effort regardless and where the tripod is is exactly where I'd be standing. So um, I'd have like all my weight available to me, much better leverage. And I'm not trying to make excuses or anything, but just saying, when you go to do this yourself, you wanna make sure that you have some maximum leverage. And the way I'm positioned here, it, it, it doesn't really allow for that. Now right, we're gonna try one more time to get it in and then I'm gonna use a hammer and a socket. And again, it, it just loves to grab one glove. All right, looks like we're making some more progress, a little bit better this time around. All 
All right, another example of where you don't want to force anything, you want to make sure that there's nothing getting caught up in a way that would damage something. So here's a socket. It's a 916s, uh, what you call it, it's not it's the wrong size. Um, you need something a little bit narrower than that. Okay, all I'm trying to do here is just test the movement. Okay, that feels perfectly fine to me. So I just gotta use whatever's around. All right, before we go any further, I do wanna recheck these boost valve ports with the Sonics assembly installed. So just curious to see what the difference is. Um, I'm sure you are too. So we'll get our gas positioned, crank up the machine. And so this is gonna be the inboard port that we're gonna test first. Uh, this looks like it's holding 15 inches, so that's an improvement of 5 inches over the factory boost assembly. So here is the outboard side. Okay, and that's holding 25 inches of lift. That is a perfect seal. Okay, in fact, it was difficult for me to... Uh, get this little gasket off of there. All right, so this is good to go. Uh, that's why I like using the Sonics O-ring boost valves because <clears throat> they do a great job of restoring what otherwise could be a worn out bore or just an imperfect seal between the sleeve and the inner diameter of the casting. 